Several years back, one fine evening, my daughter came running to me and said, Dad, I want to eat something. Let's go out. I peered out of the window and saw that it was raining. And I told her, not today, maybe some other time. And she said, why is that? So I told her, yeah, it's raining outside, so we'll go some other time. She then said, why is it raining? Well, I wanted to keep it simple. So I told her, you know, there are plenty of clouds up there. She wouldn't relent. She said, why are there so many clouds? Now I said, okay, let's put an end to this. I said, you won't understand what I say. So you just go and play with your toys. Does that sound familiar? How often have we stood in the way of our children's inquisitiveness? My dear friends, we have a calamity facing us, and that is the destruction of one of the most valuable natural resources in this world. I'm not talking of petroleum, nor diamonds, nor lithium. I'm talking about curiosity. And this is more so among the underprivileged sections of the society. 98% of children between the age of two and four ask questions. And by the time these kids get out of high school, less than 10% are asking questions. According to Paul Harris, a Harvard psychologist, children ask something like, 40,000 questions between the age of two and five. Yes, 40,000. You heard me right. So then why does it fall off the cliff, as you see in this chart? Well, by the way, the numbers for India are extrapolated based on our experience. It's not based on research. But nevertheless, the trend lines are that. Well, there are multiple reasons why that happens, but I'll probably touch upon a couple of them. One is that our education system values answers. It doesn't value questions. You give a good answer, you get marks, you get applauded. You ask a tough question, what does the teacher say? Hey, don't disturb the class. <laughs> right? So that's the first challenge. Two is curiosity thrives in an unstructured environment. And so as the child goes from an unstructured environment of the home into a structured environment of school, and by the way, even preschools are getting very structured these days, then it rings the death knell of curiosity. And these, I think, are the two fundamental reasons. If you look at answers and questions as two stocks in a stock market, now the school system is saying, answers, value is going up, and the questions is going down. But in reality, you know, while answers help you in school, questions help you in life. So as the world becomes more complex, the value of questions in the stock market is actually going up significantly, and the value of answers is going down. And why is that? Knowledge today is a commodity. It's available at the click of a button. It's no longer a differentiator. Right? Also, the half-life of knowledge is dropping rapidly, which means that anything that I learned today is very soon going to be obsolete. And therefore, our ability to ask questions, to apply that knowledge, is what differentiates us from the rest. So let's look at why is curiosity so important, and none more curious than Albert Einstein, who was gifted a compass by his dad on his birthday when he was four. And he started by asking, why does the compass always point north? I'm sure all of us have seen that. So he said that if he had an hour to solve a problem, he would spend 55 minutes asking questions. Because once you've got the right questions, getting the answer is not time consuming. This is way back, a century back. Fast forward to this year, a survey of 1,500 leaders across the world, they were asked, in this digital era, what do you think are the most important leadership qualities? 
none of them talked about knowledge none of them talked about being a cat in java or ai or ml or whatever they said adaptability curiosity creativity so again it comes back to curiosity creativity as something which is absolutely critical for us now that's great is it enough if we be curious curiosity without action is pure philosophy and i'm sure you'll agree we have a country of philosophers go to a chai wala he'll tell how virat kohli should play right but curiosity when combined with action leads to innovation how many of you have seen this or do you have this at home i'm sure life we can't imagine life without this right the microwave oven now percy spencer was doing some research for the us defense way back in 1941 he was working on radar technology and like most of us he also would like to take a break when he's tired and his habit was that when he took a break he would eat a chocolate so when he put his hand inside his coat pocket to pick out his chocolate he saw that it had melted now if i were in his place i would probably pick another chocolate eat it and move on but percy spencer being who he was he asked the question why did this chocolate melt but he didn't stop there he then went on to experiment on that and he found that when he was doing his experiments with the radar there were some microwaves which were radiating and that actually melted his chocolate and thus was born the microwave oven so curiosity has to be combined with action and that's what leads to innovation that brings me to the title of my talk as indians we are very expressive right so when we see something counterintuitive we not expecting least expected let's say someone's walking on their head we go ah there's a sense of wonderment the sense of disbelief there's a lot of questions twirling in our minds as to how did this happen now once the excitement dies down now we are trying to explore trying to discover the answer trying to figure out the reason behind that and once we find out we say aha oh is that so the journey starts from ah and goes and ends at aha if this journey is filled with fun we call it haha so if learning in the 20th century was all about the three r's reading writing and arithmetic learning in the 21st century is about the three a's a ah stands for curiosity a ah stands for creativity and haha ha for confidence and it's our belief that if a classroom has these three elements we are on the right track and that has become the mission of agastya to spark curiosity nurture creativity and instill confidence in underprivileged children across the country and also the teachers in these government schools so what you see on the left side is a series of programs so how do we kind of spark this curiosity then so what you have there is whether it is science math art ecology digital uh, literacy design thinking doesn't matter these are all means to an end and the end is to spark curiosity but and we do this through various delivery mechanisms like a mobile science lab which criss crosses the country a science center a miniature version of the mobile science lab which is a lab on a bike which incidentally won the google award night village schools and innovation buses but the crown jewel is a campus at a place called kupam which is about 2 and 1/2 hours drive from bangalore it's a large creativity hub of agastya where all the r&d happens and from there everything spans out into the outreach program so how does this actually work i think we just now experienced music therapy uh, and it, it would have made a huge difference to us because if it was just explained and we didn't experience it it would be difficult for us to imagine and then you know think through that but the experience made all the difference so what we do is exactly that 
convert every single concept in science or math into an experience. So a child doesn't learn Archimedes principle, a child experiences Archimedes principle. A child doesn't learn Newton's law, a child will experience Newton's law. And experiences are sticky, I'm sure we are going to keep trying this multiple times over the next few days and we will remember that for a very, very long time, right? So how do we create these experiences? Now that takes me to this learning pyramid. You know, when I went to school or college, I listened to a lecture, I went home and read. I guess that's pretty much the scenario today in most places. There are some exceptions, of course. And research says that these are the two most ineffective ways of learning. Now, we just experienced music therapy. Experiential learning is very, very sticky. It stays with us for a long time. The other advantage with experiential learning is it's very amenable to questioning. The moment I do something and I experience, now for example, I put my e fingers this way. My next question may be, if I put only one finger, what will happen? Is there some difference? Or maybe if I put my little finger instead of my big finger, is that going to make a difference? So I keep getting a lot of questions and keep trying out. So it's very, very amenable to curiosity. The other is peer-to-peer -peer teaching. You know, generally kids are a bit frightened to ask questions of their teachers or parents. But if it's their peers, no inhibition. So these two actually help in terms of uh, uh, questioning, in terms of sparking curiosity. And the way we do it is creating this. I'd like to take you to a village in uh, Andhra Pradesh, in Shantipuram Mandal, in Kuppam Taluk of Chitur district. There's this girl called Monica. She was in grade seven. She had absolutely no interest in studies. Science was anyway very distant, forget. Now one fine day, all the kids in that village were coming to our campus at Agastya. And she said, okay, you go, I'm not coming. The kids finally persuaded her to join. So she came very reluctantly and sat in the last row. Luck would have it that the Agastya instructor on that day picked that girl and he said, hey, Monica, please come over. She had no choice, she went over. He pricked her finger, took a drop of blood, put it on a slide and showed it under the microscope. And he also told her what her blood group was. Now something clicked within Monica. Suddenly she found a deep connect between science and herself and started developing an interest, not just in science, but in studies. And so the trajectory started slowly changing. Fast forward three years, when she was in grade 10, her dad called her and said, so you're in grade 10? Next year, I'm going to get you married and send you off to your in-laws. Unfortunately, that's still the status in many villages across the country. But these three years at Agastya gave her so much confidence that she struck a deal with her dad. She said, dad, if I ace the exam, you will allow me to study further. Otherwise, I'll do whatever you say. Now, the dad was very confident she would fail the exam, forget acing. And I'm sure you guessed it right, that she actually came first in her school. Now, you need to give it to her dad that he stuck to his end of the promise. And she, he put her in hostel, and she went to Tirupati and studied in Venkateshwara University. And that was huge for them, you know, unprecedented. Today, she's working in the horticulture department of the government of Andhra Pradesh because her aim is to help farmers like her dad. And that's why she chose that. Now what we are doing is creating those pinprick moments, thousands of pinprick moments every day across the country. And believe me, we don't know which pinprick moment is going to impact whom. We just keep creating more and more of these. And many a times we wouldn't even know that this person has impacted. Because Monica came back and shared a story we got to know. Otherwise, we would not know. But that should not stop us from creating those pinprick moments. So the approach of Agastya is through those experiences, create a lot of pinprick moments in children across the country. And I spend half my time sitting in classrooms and observing children. And I find a lot of these happening right in front of me. 
So I think this is something which is the key to sparking curiosity. So is it enough if we just ask questions? I think like everything else, there is a value curve there. You start off with questions like what, which is basically trying to get some information, right? And then slowly move to a question like why. Why is something happening? Like why is it raining? Why? There you're trying to understand certain phenomenon, you're trying to question something. Then you move to what if. What if is where you are trying to superimpose your thoughts and ideas on the why. So I say, why is the wheel of a cycle circular? And then I say, what if the wheel was square? So now I'm introducing my own new thought onto this. And then the how is the execution of the what if. So you move from knowledge to curiosity to creativity to innovation. If you are able to ask the right questions, believe me, you can generate multi-billion dollar businesses. There was a guy called Reed Hastings. He was feeling bored, so he went, borrowed a video. He saw the movie, put it in the shelf, forgot. A month later, he remembered that he had not returned it. So he took it and went, and he was given a fat bill. Late fee. I'm sure most of you have not heard about Reed Hastings. But he asked the question, why should I pay a late fee? Then he didn't stop there. He said, what if I created a video lending business on the model of a health club where I just have to pay a monthly subscription, no late fee, nothing, do what you want. And thus was born Netflix. And the rest is history, as they say. Right? All of you heard of Netflix? Yes. So, whenever you watch Netflix, remember this. That if you question enough, you could be the owner of the next Netflix. It is said that the end of education is character. And this is extremely important for us. Because curiosity leads to creativity. But what kind of creativity are we looking at? We surely don't want the Wall Street kind of creativity. We're looking at creativity which is connected, humane, anchored, and creativity which helps society at large. And that's why Agastya added a fourth C, which is called caring. Caring for each other, caring for the environment, caring for anything and everything that we do. So the three Cs of curiosity, creativity, and confidence operate under the umbrella value called caring. And that ensures that all these kids who are coming out of these schools are using their creative potential for the betterment of society. So it is said that the education system of a country is a bank on which the nation draws a check when in a crisis. So let's join hands to build a curious, creative, confident education system, but under the value system called caring, so that Whenever required, we can draw a check on this and build a great nation. Thank you.